Hey guys, it's Kevin on the going to be a movie review, and I'm just going to tell you guys right now, this is not a classic movie review. Yes, this was a movie that was released several years ago. No, this is not a classic movie review. The reason I'm reviewing this movie is because the sequel of this movie is coming out, um, very, it actually came out today, um, and I'm not seeing it today, because I'm definitely seeing Mad Max Fury Road today, definitely, I will plan on seeing that, but this is going to be my review for the, uh, 2012, um, musical comedy, um, mus musical comedy Pitch Perfect. Now, I wasn't planning on reviewing this. I was going to tell myself, do I want to review this? Do I not want to? Here's what ended up happening. Um, in my choir class today, we watched this movie, uh, we watched this movie, and I decided, you know, I decided that, you know what, I have to review it, obviously, because the sequel's coming out, and, uh, that's literally the reason why we watched it. Like, my choir teacher's literally like, Pitch Perfect 2 came out, let's watch Pitch Perfect. I thought that was really funny that he did that, actually, but, um... We watched this movie, and I have to say that the first time I watched this movie, I definitely was looking forward to it. I remember that I got the Blu-ray that Christmas, and I watched it. You guys don't care about any of this, but this was before I did reviews. And I remember I absolutely loved the movie, and looking back, I still love this movie. I think this is a fantastic movie. I really love Pitch Perfect. I know a lot of people think it's kind of cheesy, but I'm going to talk about why I like this movie as much as I do. Sorry, that was disgusting. Um, sorry. But, um... I'm going to talk about why I like this movie as much as I do, what I think works so well in this movie, what I want to see in the second movie, and let's get into this plot, this, the plot of this movie, because one of the things I like about this movie is the plot, because basically the plot of this movie focuses on this girl, Becca, who she is your typical, she's not really your typical um, uh, college girl, she is a new freshman, and she doesn't even want to attend college, she really doesn't, but she's forced to do so by her father, because he's actually a professor at the university, and, uh, they don't exactly have the greatest relationship, so he really wants her to attend this college, and she wants to make him happy, so she's like, whatever, I'll do it. Um, but she doesn't really fit in anywhere. Like, she can't find a single club she fits into until she meets the Barden, um, the Barden Bells. Now, the Barden Bellas, they are the second most popular a cappella group, because the most popular is this boy band, a boy group called the Treblemakers, but basically, their group has kind of been through a lot, because the year before, they had this competition, but their now, now senior Aubrey Posen actually ended up throwing up and made, and made them lose the competition, so they really want to start over, get a fresh new start, um, and basically no one really wants to join they get other people to join basically and uh basically sh becca actually wants to take this group and make it better because she sees that they're kind of just using recycled material and she wants to use new stuff and she does whatever she can to make this group better but also has this whole thing there's a subplot with this guy jesse jesse is this guy who she works with at this record store but she doesn't realize that he's in the Troublemakers till Aubrey says so, and she says you can't have sex with a Troublemaker. So she does whatever she can to make sure that they do not fall in love, while he tries to fall in love with her, and I will talk about the subplot, but that's basically a plot of Pitch Perfect. And there are a lot of other subplots in this movie, but that's one of the things I love about this movie, is right away the plot. I think the plot is really good, and definitely something I really enjoy. And... Let me talk about why I like this movie so much, because this movie could have been an absolute disaster. It could have been one of those really dumb Disney Channel Nickelodeon singing movies that you see. Now, I like High School Musical, things like that. Those are actually good movies. I'm talking about stuff like Spectacular and movies like movies like on Nickelodeon and Disney that really are just like very forgettable. That's what this movie could have been. But there are so many things that make the movie so good. But the thing that makes this movie, I think, so good is the acting. The acting in this movie is fantastic. And their dynamic is just great. Anna Kendrick. This was the movie that showed that Anna Kendrick was a real actress. I mean, she had done stuff like Up in the Air, which I heard she was actually very good in. But most people thought of her as the girl from Twilight. That's what most people saw her as. And that's what I saw her as as well, as the girl from Twilight. I didn't really see her as anyone else. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> seeing her take on this role as Becca, I thought she was a great character. Because Becca's actually a very uh, complex character, I have to say. Because her character, one of the things about her character is that she does this really cool thing where she'll, she mixes two songs together. And it's really cool the way she does that. That's something I think is really interesting. Her passion for music is really good. And just the fact that she really didn't want to go to college, that was really interesting and really um, relatable to many people. Because a lot of people don't want to go to college, but they go anyway because they're forced to. And I thought her character was really great with that. I also love how she really tries to fix um, 
this the bar in Belgium. She kind of clashes with Aubrey because she wants to make things better, but Aubrey doesn't let anyone like have a say in anything. I thought her character was very good because of that, and she gave a very good form. She also is hilarious in this story. I have to say, Anna Kendrick handles um, you know um, Kimmy stuff very well. I've talked about how hot she is before, but the reason I think Anna Kendrick is one of the greatest actresses working today is just because of how versatile she is. And I really started with this movie. This is where we really got to see that she could sing. We never knew that Anna Kendrick could sing as well as she did, and she's fucking amazing in this movie. So I thought she was great and she did a great job. Anna Cam is Aubrey, perfectly plays, I'm gonna say the bitchy one, because she really is, she completely takes over, she doesn't let anyone have a say in what they want, she wants to use the same recycled material, and I thought her character was really interesting, you kind of do sympathize with her though, because, uh, she actually is going through a lot, she wants to make sure that the instant that didn't happen doesn't happen again, and you kind of do feel bad for her, because she's really insecure about herself, and she's constantly critical about everything, even herself, she's very critical about herself, and I thought her character was really interesting, with that, and I thought she did, definitely did a very good job. Brittany Snow is really good as Chloe. She has this great subplot where she gets this thing called Nodes, um, which is just every, people in my school talk about like reference that all the time. She was great in the movie. Rebel Wilson, though, steals the show in every scene she is in. Oh my god. And this was before Rebel Wilson was, you know, as well known as she is now, so. I thought she did a fantastic job in this movie as Fat Amy. First of all, the fact that she calls herself Fat Amy is hilarious. It really is. Um, she's hilarious at points. I love that she just tries to do her own thing. She doesn't want to do what the rest of the group does. And plus, no one really likes her. I thought she was overall hilarious, and she does a great job in this movie. Stole the show. Maybe, st I think it's probably still her best performance, honestly. I think it really still is um, her best performance. She had a terrible movie called Super Fun Night because of this movie, but I still thought she did a great job, and she could really sing very well as well. She definitely did a very good job. The other people, they're fine. Esther Dean is Cynthia. Um, Alexis Snap is Stacy. She's fucking hot, but her character is really good uh, as well. Uh, Hannah New Lee is Lily. She's this really quiet one. One of the things over the movie is the characters in general. Each character in the Bard and Bells you can kind of relate to. You always have like the one that doesn't fit in as well with the group, the one that wants to take over, the clashing. In fact, while we were watching this movie, people in uh, my choir are like, oh, that's this person, that's this person. And I'll see, I'm like, you know what? The, you know, I came to this conclusion. This movie is very relatable because every sort of group, like a choir or an acapella group, or any sort of group, you have these kind of people. You have the slutty one, like Stacy, because Stacy is the slutty one. She's the one that sleeps around and has sex with everyone, and even wants to, and even wants to have sex to maybe let them win, and things like that. Um... And then you have Cynthia, who's like the tomboy one. You ha you always have someone like that. You have Fat Amy, who's the one that really doesn't fit in as well with the group, and just the funny one. You have Chloe, who is kind of just like the co-leader, and is everyone loves. That's basically Chloe. You have Aubrey, who's really uptight. You have these kind of people in your group. You have the really quiet one, Jessica. You have all these people who are very, you know, who are very relatable. I have to say, that's something, something I love about the movie I thought was very well done. And just like the Barton Bells, the Troublemakers are just as relatable. Uh, Skylar Aston is great as Jesse. I love of his character because his relation with Becca is probably one of the best parts of this movie because she wants to do whatever she can as I said to make them not fall in love at the same time he really wants to be with her he wants to do whatever he can to be with her and there's this great subplot where they talk about movies and how she doesn't really like movies and he wants her to watch these movies and I really like that because I feel like that's something else that the movie really tries to show is that as how great movies are and the fact that he shows her the breakfast club and like shows her the ending um I, th I just love that scene, honestly. I think they have great chemistry in this movie. He definitely did a great job. And I thought Skylar Aston was really good in this movie. Ben Platt is Benji. He's kind of the one you feel bad for because he actually doesn't get into the, um, the Troublemakers. And you see the, kind of, like, the struggle he goes through. But I really liked his character. I thought he was really, uh, you know, uh, you really felt bad for him at times. Honestly, there's this great scene where they're at this, uh, party and he's just outside of his window listening to their song. You feel so bad for him. And I thought he did a great job. Definitely, he was really good in the movie. And the last person I'm going to talk to uh, talk about is uh, Adam Devine as Bumper, who basically is the main villain in this movie. He is a complete uh, dick, but that's basically what his character is supposed to be. He's overconfident, he's a dick, he's worse than Aubrey, and I thought he was really good, at, and really funny at times as well. He was definitely very funny. And the last two people I'm going to talk about are Elizabeth Banks and John Benjamin Hickey. Uh, not, not John Benjamin Hickey, but um... <laughs> 
John Michael Higgins and Elizabeth Banks as the two commentators for the uh, for the uh, basically big like uh, acapella events are absolutely hilarious. I think they did a great job in this movie, and I think a little bit of their characters that they kind of make fun of all those sporting events where you have you know all those sporting movies where you see the commentators go back and forth. It definitely makes fun of that in this movie because why would there be two commentators at this you know competition? It's ridiculous, but it works so well because it's so funny. I think they definitely did a great job, and I thought they were both very funny and something. I I thought was really good. Yeah, Elizabeth Banks actually directs the second one, which I heard that's like the worst part of the second one, but I'm looking forward to seeing what she does with that. Um, the directing by Jason Moore, I think he definitely knew what kind of movie he was making. He didn't, he wasn't trying to make, you know, an Oscar movie here. He was trying to make a fun movie that people would enjoy, people would relate to, and that's exactly what he did. He made a movie that was relatable. He made a movie that you can enjoy and watch with your friends and endlessly quote, and I think he did a great job of directing the movie. And he wasn't afraid to have some heart in there. He wasn't afraid to have relatable characters. That's something, something I liked. He didn't try to make, he didn't sugarcoat things. That, that Because this movie does have genuinely dramatic moments where I thought was really well done. Yes, it's definitely a fun movie, but it does have some really good heart in there. And he definitely, he also was definitely a fan of musicals because he definitely knows what kind of songs people love. And that's something I thought he did really well in this movie. The screenplay is the other best part of this movie. That's the other thing that works so well is the quotable lines. There are so many endlessly quotable lines. The fact they say Akka at the end of everything. The fact no nodes uh, crushed it. There's so many lines in this movie that get said so much. In fact, I can think of many times where people in my school have quoted this movie endlessly. Uh, people say they have nodes like all the time in my school. It's hilarious. I can't get over how many times people say that. Like, if someone is sick, they're like, I have nodes. It's hilarious, honestly. Uh, the Cup song got extremely popular because I don't think it's annoying. I think it's a good song. I think they do it well in the movie. Uh, what else is, what other line? There are other really funny lines in this movie as well, definitely. Uh, I mean, really, there are. There are some great lines, and I thought they did a great job overall. And the screenplay is just really witty, really fun, and it's definitely very enjoyable. I think it's what makes the movie so good. Had the movie not been as funny, the movie would not have been as good. And the last thing I really want to talk about is cinematography is fine, by the way. The score, though, to this movie. The songs, that's what that's the other thing that makes this movie as good as it is. If there had not been as many songs in this movie, the movie would simply not have been as good. There's so many entertaining songs, and you just love seeing the journey of them go through this. Um from them doing the same songs over and over again to where they get the end of this movie, it's incredible because they go from doing the same three songs over and over again to doing really popular pop songs and do, you're doing a really great job, honestly. Everyone in this movie can sing very, very well, and I was surprised by how good most of them could sing. I mean, you look at these people, and you're like, they can't sing as, they probably can't sing, but no, they can sing amazingly, honestly. And that's something I love watching this movie, is seeing that they all really can sing. Especially Rebel, Rebel Wilson, even though she's a comedic character, she has a very good voice, and I think she did definitely a very good job. Anna Kendrick was amazing, Anna Camp, they all can sing very, very well, and, uh... <sighs> Alexa Snap as well, she has an amazing voice, and I think that's definitely something that I thought was great with the score, is that it was very, it, and I like that it wasn't all modern either, they did have some classic songs in there that everyone knows, and that's basically how it would be, because when you're in a group like this, you sometimes do modern songs, you sometimes do classic songs, which is very similar to my choir, I mean, I'm not, it's not an acapella group, but it is a choir, and sometimes we do classic stuff sometimes we do modern stuff for a pop for a pops concert for example uh which is coming up like in, in june or whatever and like the end of may but basically that's the concert we're preparing for right now like three of our songs are 80s songs and one of them is a modern day song and i think it's really good this movie shows that because it's true you'll always have modern and classic and i think the movie does definitely a very good job of showing that <laughs> And overall, guys, it's really hard to say about Pitch Perfect. By the way, the editing's great. This movie flies by like that. I was into it the whole time. It's never boring. If you love the story and you love the characters, you're going to love this movie, honestly. If you've been in a cappella group, you love music, you're probably going to love this movie. And for people who don't like these kind of movies, like music, you still probably like this movie. There's, I think there's something to love in this movie for everyone, honestly. There really is. I think everyone, they can find something they love about this movie. And I think, honestly, the movie is very relatable at times. I think the movie is very... Um, it should be, you know, I think a lot of people should um, applaud this movie for giving Anna Kendrick the career she had because, let's face it, Anna Kendrick would not be as successful as she was without this movie. There would be no last five years without this movie. Remember that. There would be no last five years, and 
This is a movie that I can constantly love, and every time I watch it, I love it more and more. It gets by definitely a you know, 4.5 4. out of 5 or an A. I absolutely love this movie. I think it's a fantastic movie. And I, I, I highly recommend it if you guys haven't seen it, definitely check it out. And I'm really looking forward to the second one. The second one, I think, is a really interesting plot. It looks a lot, like, a lot of fun. And that's really what I wanted the second one to be. I just wanted it to be a fun movie because that's what this one was. It was a fun movie. It's not too high concept, but it does have some things in there that I think were good about it. It does have some good messages of teamwork and, you know, letting everyone be the leader. Because at the end of this movie, pretty much everyone's the leader. And that's something I definitely like and I think was definitely very good of that movie. It's something I really enjoyed. But that's basically my review, Pitch Perfect. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys saw this movie. If you have seen it, and I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for Girl Meets World. So I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.